Bosnia and Herzegovina is a country in the Balkans tucked neatly between Croatia, Serbia, and Montenegro, and essentially surrounded by Roman Catholics and Eastern Orthodox Christians. Within Bosnian borders, roughly half of the population is Muslim. Orthodox Christianity makes up around 31% of the population, followed by Roman Catholics at 15%. But with so much Christian influence from all around, why does Bosnia still have so many Muslims? The Islamization of Bosnia can actually be traced back to before the first entry of the Ottoman Empire. Although Islam was yet to be introduced to the area, Bosnia was not quite as Christian as any of its neighbors had been, and this made it much more open to welcoming a new faith. Back when the Christians began to send missions throughout the Balkans in the 9th century, Bosnia appears to have been a bit neglected during the process. At first, the Sea of Rome and the Sea of Constantinople tried to divide the Balkans between each side's sphere of influence, but once the Great Schism occurred in 1054, the presence of Catholicism and Orthodoxy became more clear-cut and split, with the Catholics dominating Croatia and the Orthodox doing the same in Serbia. The intention was to nominally leave Bosnia to the Roman Catholics, but the faith never really had strong enough roots to make the Bosnians loyal to the Western Church. And since the Eastern Church hadn't tried much either, the region ended up being a weird echo of the neighboring faith. The Orthodox Church did eventually get a bit of a foothold, but the Catholics were no longer their only competition. By now, an unofficial Bosnian church had been established that would eventually become fully independent of both East and West, and for now, began to encroach upon the Catholic influence in the center, North, and West of Bosnia. This quickly became a problem for Rome. In 1199, the neighboring ruler Vukan wrote a letter to Pope Innocent III, expressing his concerns for what he viewed as a heretical church and people, including the Bosnian leader Kulin himself. Accusations began to mount against the ruler over the next couple of years, as multiple authoritarian figures, including the King of Hungary himself, joined the wave of critics. Kulin soon tried to quell the brewing tensions by reaffirming his loyalty to the Catholic faith and practice, but not much was done back in the Bosnian church to prove that. After Kulin's death in 1216, Romans sent a new mission into Bosnia to try and reconvert the locals, but their preaching fell on deaf ears. Angered by this and backed by the Hungarians, who were eager to expand their own authority into Bosnia, the new pope, Pope Honorius III, called for a Hungarian crusade into Bosnia as a punishment for what the West still deemed as heresy. Between 1225 and 1250, multiple crusades would be attempted and shut down by the Bosnians. While Pope Gregory IX ousted the Catholic Bishop of Bosnia in 1234 for being a supposed heretic. In 1252, now under Pope Innocent IV, Rome tried to place the Bishop of Bosnia under the hand of the Hungarians, which swiftly prompted angered refusal from the locals. Many Bosnians now denounced Catholicism and solidified the existence of the independent Bosnian church. This predictably created even more conflict between Rome and Bosnia, which would continue on and off for some time. During this era, the Bosnians became targets of both the Western and Eastern churches, and many were persecuted by the surrounding faiths, which viewed them as heretical. This created a situation unlike what could be found in the rest of the Balkans. In Bosnia, neither Rome nor Constantinople could be trusted, and that meant that, for many, neither could the faiths. This left the Bosnian church as the only reliable option, but the church was still young and with a stained reputation. The Ottoman Turks began their conquest of Bosnia in the 1380s and took the first step in introducing Islam to the region. Still, just as they had done when the Hungarians launched their crusade, the Bosnians fought valiantly against their invaders. Their disloyalty to the authority in Rome and Constantinople may have affected the religious life of Bosnia, but it surely didn't mean that the locals were open to being conquered. 
Subsequently, the Ottoman campaign lasted for decades, as the Bosnians simply refused to give in. By 1451, the Turks were able to set up a military administrative unit, but it wouldn't be until 1463 that the Kingdom of Bosnia would really fall into Ottoman hands. At first, this successful conquest was not an automatic trigger for Bosnians converting to Islam. One of the reasons why the Ottoman Empire had been able to expand as much as it did was because of its ethnic and religious tolerance, which would therefore be put into place in captured Bosnia as well. There was not a mass conversion executed by force or anything of the like, but nonetheless, there would quickly be incentives established for those Bosnians who wished to do so. As was typical in Ottoman vassal states, Christians were allowed to remain Christian, but they faced restrictions and risks that Muslims did not. There were some extreme examples, such as with the Janissaries, but in general, these instances could be found in policies relating to taxation and privileges that typically demoted Christians to second-class citizens. Trading rights, the ability to participate in politics, and other freedoms were stripped from non-Muslims under Ottoman rule, which worked well to incentivize their subjects to convert. This tactic was successful to an even higher degree in Bosnia as well, likely due to the pre-existing circumstances surrounding Bosnian Christians. As the Ottomans continued to consolidate their power in the former kingdom, more and more Bosnians began to stray away from not only the Catholic and Orthodox churches, but even the Bosnian church. The lack of any strong loyalty to one specific faith made it a lot easier for the Bosnians to be convinced. While some made the change more for the environmental benefits, others actually found more appeal in this new faith than they had seen in that of the deceitful Rome, or overbearing Constantinople, and even their own local church. As a result, there was a gradual shift towards Islam throughout Bosnia over the next few centuries, as the Ottomans remained in control. It's estimated that roughly two-thirds of Bosnia were Muslim by the start of the 17th century, and the influence of Islam would remain until the Bosnian uprising in 1831 ousted their Ottoman conquerors. While the exact percentage of Muslims in Bosnia may have shifted after the Turks departed, a peculiar thing happened. No one tried to re-Christianize the Bosnians. Even when the Austro-Hungarians annexed Bosnia in the early 20th century, everyone had more or less given up on the whole mission and conversion ordeal. And when the December Constitution solidified Bosnian freedom of religion, that was essentially the end of that. Bosnia's Muslim population was there to stay. To recap, the reason why Bosnia is seen as a Muslim nation and does in fact have a large Muslim population is mostly due to the Ottoman era, but also connected to the relationship that the nation shared with the Christian East and West. Being labeled as heretics by both sides of your faith would be greatly dissuading, and it's not easy to start your own church. The people of Bosnia learned these lessons firsthand throughout history. This left the nation much more open to the concept of considering or even converting to a new religion. And when you add to that the option of gaining back your rights and freedoms as a first-class citizen, it doesn't seem surprising at all that Islam became the leading influence in Ottoman Bosnia.